Venezuela today is in crisis. On the economic side, you've seen a huge buildup in debt. And with the fall in oil prices, there's much less money coming in than in the past. Venezuela's democracy really is under incredible stress today. President Maduro has been repressing opposition leaders, so really limiting the civil rights of many Venezuelans. So the United States is Venezuela's largest trading partner. And it's important for the United States in that it is one of our sources of oil. Hugo Chavez came onto the political scene in 1992. He did tap into a real frustration in the Venezuelan people who were facing very high poverty rates and lots of difficulties. He built on his popularity at the time to later on in 1998 run for president and win. And then in the next 15 years, really reshape Venezuela's economy and its politics. He came in with a very anti-American stance. He often railed against the United States, either at home or famously at the United Nations. So Nicolas Maduro was the chosen successor of Hugo Chavez. He's much less charismatic. Chavez, whether people loved or hate him, he drew people to him. And so Nicolas Maduro, as he tries to negotiate very difficult economic, political, and social issues, does not have that personal relationship with Venezuelans. One of the big root causes of the crisis today in Venezuela is economics. The government has taken much of the private sector, brought it into the public sector. At the same time, they've taken over PDVSA, which is the state-owned oil company, and used much of the money to expand social programs. So a good side over this last 15 plus years is we've seen real improvements in poverty rates and in literacy rates. On the challenging side is the Venezuelan government overspent. Another part of the crisis is political. We've seen over the last 15 years an eroding of civil and political rights. Hugo Chavez began to systematically undermine the independence of democratic institutions. One of the more worrying things is the deterioration of the rule of law. Venezuela is now one of the most dangerous places in the world. The challenge is not just petty crime or individual criminals, but drug trafficking and guerrilla groups within border regions and other more remote areas. If there was a wholesale collapse in Venezuela, there are several things the United States could do. The most dramatic would be a direct intervention. This could happen unilaterally or multilaterally. The benefit of this is that you could be on the ground, perhaps help those who want to rebuild their nation. The downside is it's very costly. It puts Americans and others at direct risk. Also, many Venezuelans view the United States with suspicion. Another option is not to directly intervene, but try to contain the collapse. The United States could work with Venezuela's neighbors to deal with refugees, with the interruption of trade, to try to make sure that the economic side of things and crime don't spill over. The benefit is that the United States wouldn't have boots within Venezuela. A challenge of this approach is it doesn't do much for the 30 million people living in Venezuela. Another US option comes with economic and diplomatic intervention. Once things calm down in Venezuela, once perhaps there are reformers trying to rebuild the economy, rebuild a democracy, the United States can be helping them renegotiate their debt, Venezuela has incredible natural resources, particularly oil. The challenge is to move from what has become, at least in part, a rent-seeking economy to one that can benefit more people and return to a very participatory democracy like many of its neighbors in the region.